and then you get the first look, first shot, first kill. And the more of those that you can do before he even knows you're in the area, the war can be over very quickly. Between them, the F-22s only have 12 missiles left. They'll need more firepower to engage the huge enemy formation in front of them. They enlist the help of a pair of nearby B-1Rs. The B-1R, first outlined by Boeing in 2004, is a proposed replacement for the venerable B-1B Lancer, a supersonic strategic bomber in service since 1986. The B-1R has a top speed of Mach 2.2, twice that of other heavy bombers like the B-52. If built, it would be equipped with the same powerful engines the F-22 uses, the Pratt & Whitney F-119. This means the B-1R will have super crews, just like the Raptor. Add advanced radar and a full complement of 20 AIM-120D missiles to the mix, and it is clear how formidable this future weapon could be. Let's say we have a Raptor that's able to detect, localize, and fix an enemy aircraft. Transmit that information back to a command and control circuit or to the bomb truck or the missile truck itself and then have the missile truck fire the missile against the enemy. Before the B-1R attack, the stealthy Raptors will engage the enemy formation by firing their remaining radar-guided missiles. Not enough to take out the whole formation, but enough to sow confusion and panic. They hope this will protect the unstealthy B-1Rs from counterattack. The Raptors move in. A complete radar portrait of the enemy force is drawn from sensors all over the F-22. Even the skin of the plane itself is a sensor called the Distributed Aperture System. What that is, is on each of the aircraft's skin, along the wings, there's thousands of tiny little receivers, passive receivers, that can take in signals intelligence. Um, these are very good for missile warning. Um, they give you a very good idea of what's coming at you. The F-22s fire their remaining AMRAMs. All that's left in their weapons bays are close-range, heat-seeking missiles. The volley tracks the enemy formation boring in on their mark at over 2,400 miles per hour. At this speed, it takes just seven seconds for the missiles to cover the final five miles to the target. All of a sudden, the bad guy's flight starts falling apart. Everybody scrambles, try to get away from the missiles. Chaff, flares, whatever it takes. Then, the Americans complete their one-two punch. Like a team of special forces soldiers deep in enemy territory, the F-22s, still undetected, relay targeting coordinates to the B-1Rs via a secure broadband data link. They ripple fire missile after missile from the AMRAM's maximum effective range of 120 miles. It's a 21st century version of the Archer's fuselage in medieval combat missile warning radar in the enemy cockpits once again raises the alarm, but to no avail. The enemy is too disorganized from the Raptor attack to effectively counter. The chaos among the enemy ranks perfectly illustrates the stunning advantage of high technology in a dogfight of the future. Can you imagine what that would do to a command and control cycle when all of a sudden your aircraft are disappearing from missile shots and you have no idea where the, uh, where the targeting is coming from? In just a few moments, it's every man for himself. Radio chatter is intense as the enemy tries to determine who is alive and who is dead. But among the confused and scattered formation, a handful of pilots flying French Rafales managed to survive the storm of AMRAMs from the B-1Rs. Here's how. 
In order to defeat a missile that's been launched on you, first of all, you've got to know it's coming. So you've got to have a, a good radar warning system that's going to let you know, A, you're locked on, and B, there's been missile launch at you. The AMRAMs fired by the B-1R use Doppler shift in the radar returns to calculate path of travel, speed, and distance to a target. For the Rafales, survival depends on understanding this and knowing how to overload the missile's tracking system. Enemy pilots survived by breaking into the AMRAM, perpendicular to the missile's flight path. Then they released chaff, strips of aluminum that reflect radar energy. If you go past 90, 110, 120 degrees and die for the deck, there is not a missile that is going to be able to track you down. The six remaining Rafael fighters now move against the distant B-1Rs, the only target their radars can find. A volley of missiles roar past Mark III in pursuit of the B-1s. This moment in the dogfight demonstrates just how vulnerable an unstealthy Generation IV aircraft will be in a future air war. The aircraft is damaged but not knocked out. The B-1 pilots go full throttle with a top speed over Mach 2. They're fast, but not fast enough to outrun a Rafale in full afterburner. Their hopes rest on the dogfighting prowess of the F-22s, who move in to engage the enemy within visual range. This battle will be decided up close and personal with the F-22s in full sight of the enemy.